In today's note, we are going to be moving a little bit away from math and just looking at some concepts. So we are going to be looking at the different methods or ways of obtaining a vehicle. So just some general terminology beforehand, right? a certified vehicle, so a vehicle that has passed a safety inspection. A lease is a long-term rental agreement, and a down payment is the initial payment that is due upon the purchase of a lease. Or, sorry, upon the purchase or lease of a vehicle. So, so there are some things that need, you need to kind of consider when looking at purchasing a car, right? Because it's not a cheap option and it tends, it tends to be a bigger purchase or one of the bigger purchases that you will make in your life. So what are your options when purchasing a car? So the first option that we're gonna look at is just buying it brand new and paying it full in cash. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm not going to read everything out, but I'm just going to provide just basically a brief overview. Feel free to look back at the notes um, or just pause it if you want to read it a little bit more. So if you're buying it new, paying it in cash, basically you're just paying for the car in full and there are no other payments required, right? You just make sure that you have the correct amount of money. You, know, you hand it to the dealership and then you can just drive your car off the lot. If you buy it new, but you finance it, what you're doing is basically you're making monthly payments for a specified period of time. So basically you're borrowing the money from the bank or from, from a bank that operates through the dealer and you are paying it off slowly over time. So the bank puts the money up front and you're paying it off slowly over time with interest. There tends to be higher monthly payments when you deal with financing and it usually requires an initial down payment so you do have to provide some money up front but again the nice thing is is that you don't have to pay the full amount up front you pay it off slowly over time and you get the car in the end if you lease a car so leasing a car is basically like a long-term rental so what happens is sometimes it requires a down payment or an initial down payment, and you're still paying a monthly payment over a specified period of time. And you can consider this almost like a rental fee, right? You're paying it over a specific period of time, and at the end of the lease, you return the vehicle to the dealer. There is a buyout option usually at the end of the lease, so you can choose to buy it out, where you would have to just basically pay, it, pay the dealer um, its value. So, it is similar to financing. You're pay still making monthly payments. However, at the end of a lease, you do not own the vehicle. You have to return it. And then finally, if you're buying used, so if you buy it used, um, you're base you can buy it from a dealer or it's a private sale. Um, but I'd say the biggest thing is, is just it's buyer beware, right? You want to do your due diligence and make sure that you obtain all the information about the vehicle that you can. Um, there's some more, like, like for example, the warranty, um, the mileage, um, has it been in any accidents, anything like that, right? Usually if you're buying it from a dealer, it's been looked at, it's been certified, it's gone through an inspection. If it's a private sale, it may not have, and it may be up to you to do those kind of checks. So again, just something to be um, aware of. So what are some things that you should consider when buying new or used? And again, I'm just going to put down some uh, general ones. You may have some other ones that are more specific to your taste um, or situation. But for a new vehicle, in general, something you might consider is the color. Right? When you're buying it new, you have plenty of options. So color may be one of those options that you're looking for. Any of the features, right? so the features that a car has, right? whether it be safety features or technology that's included in the car, um, so on that case, you may want to look for or look at the different models. Right? Different models will have different features. The price, obviously, you want to look around for the price, and that's something to consider when buying a new vehicle. Right, The price on a new vehicle or certain models tends to be higher or can increase. If there are any bonuses or incentives that the dealership can offer you, right? sometimes there are new buyer dealerships um, there are stu or not, uh, new buyer incentives, there are student incentives, um, there may be um, certain deals going on. Here you see like uh, employee discounts or employee pricing. With a new vehicle, you may also be concerned about the insurance costs. Right, so the insurance costs, 
you might want to consider that um, because new vehicles tend to have higher insurance rates because they are the cars are worth more if you're looking at for a used vehicle or looking at a used vehicle you may want to consider is it certified has it gone through the checks has it been checked for safety has it been in an accident Right. This is something that you may want to consider. Um, if it's been an accident, then there may be some underlying issues with the vehicle that aren't repaired. Type of previous driver. So again, the type of previous driver it kind of ties into how the car handles. Right. If you have someone, if it's only been one driver, then you can kind of track um, how how it's been handled. Has it been maintained well? and so on. If it has a number of previous drivers, then it might be hard to get any of that information and it, there may be some underlying issues again. Highway versus city driving. right? So again, just simple things that can affect the performance of the car. Was it mainly driven on the highway or was it driven mainly in the city? Is there any warranty attached to it? Right? Usually if it's a private sale, there won't be. Um, but from a dealership, um, there may be a warranty attached, as well as, again, insurance costs, right? You're going to have to be paying for insurance, so you want to just, that may factor into um, your choice. So we're just going to look at some small calculations. So looking at financing a vehicle. So a local dealership is selling a new compact car for $17,995 plus taxes. The dealership offers financing at 4.9% per year compounded monthly over four years. You have saved $3,000 for a down payment. You will finance or borrow the rest of the cost. So the first part is calculate the after-tax price of the vehicle. So to get the after-tax price, I'm just going to write after tax. You have to take the total amount of the object, or in this case, the purchase, and you're going to multiply it by 1.13. So normally, if you wanted to find the percent of something, you would multiply it by just the percent, so in this case, the 0.13. But because we're going to add it back to the original price to get a total, we're going to, that's why we include the 1 here. So in the end, should be $2, or $20,334.35. So that means that the after tax price, or therefore the after tax price, is $20,334.35. For B, we want to know what will be the amount financed or borrowed. So you have a down payment. We want to know how much um, are you going to have to actually borrow or finance. So the financed is going to be the total amount of the car after taxes minus the down payment, which was $3,000. So that means you have to borrow $17,334.35. So therefore, we must borrow $17,334.35. Next, the salesperson determines the monthly payments for the vehicle to be $398.41. Determine the total cost of the car. So the total cost is going to equal the total of the payments plus your down payment. So this is going to be everything that you put into purchasing the car. right? You have to make your monthly payments and you also paid a down payment. So your total payments will be the monthly payment of $398.41 multiplied by 48 months because it's monthly for four years, so 48 months in total, plus the down payment of $3,000 equals 2,200, or sorry, $22,123.68. So therefore, 
total cost is 22,123 dollars and 68 cents. For D, how much interest will be paid over the four years? So to figure out your interest, it's going to equal your total cost, so how much you paid in total, minus the price after tax. So to figure out how much interest you paid, you're going to take the total amount that you paid and subtract what the price of the car was. So the total cost we had just calculated, $22,123.68, minus the price after tax, which was $20,334.35. So in the end, the amount of interest that we ended up having to pay was $1,789.33. So therefore, $1,789.33 was paid in interest. Next, we're going to move on to looking at leasing a new vehicle. So again, remember, you basically, it's a long-term rental agreement, so you are going to be paying monthly for it, but you do not drive the, you do not, sorry, you do not own the car. You drive it and you pay for all the expenses, but you do not own it in the end. So to lease a new vehicle or a new car selling for $24,000 with 0% financing, a customer agrees to pay a $1,000 down payment and make 48 monthly payments of $369. So what is the total cost of leasing the vehicle? So again, the total cost is going to be everything that we put into the payments or put into, the, into buying or purchasing or leasing the vehicle. So 48 monthly payments, so it's going to be 48 months times $369 plus $1,000 for our down payment. So that means in total, when we calculate that, $18,712. So basically you are paying $18,712 to rent the vehicle for four years. So therefore, the cost of leasing is $18,712. The next part, we want to figure out what would the average monthly cost of leasing the vehicle be. So the average cost is basically everything that we had to pay or the total cost of the vehicle. So 18,712 divided by 48 months, because that's how long our lease is. And the average monthly, monthly cost we get is $389.83. Finally, if we're looking at buying a used car, again, a used car, got a little typo. So a used car will cost much less than a new model of the same car. So often a used car loan will have a shorter payback period than a loan for a new car because it wouldn't be as much. So a car is advertised for sale in a local newspaper for $5,000. A, determine the total cost of the vehicle after taxes. So again, same calculation that we kind of did before. Total cost is equal to $5,000 times 1.13, because tax was 13%, equals $5,650. So therefore, the cost is $5,650. B, suppose the monthly payment plan for the loan for two years is $256.13. What is the total cost of the car? So when you're buying a used vehicle, you may have to take out a loan from the bank to get that money as well, um, and in which case there would be monthly payments on that. But again, it should hopefully be smaller because you're buying a used car, so it won't be as expensive. So the total cost is equal to 24 payments because it's two monthly payments for 20 or for two years so 24 in total times 2005 or 256 dollars and 13 cents 
which in total we get $6,417.12. So therefore, the cost is $6,417.12. So again, just some small calculations that you may have to do to look at what the overall total cost is when buying a vehicle, whether it's purchasing, leasing, or financing, and whether it's new or used. But again, the main thing from this is to look at the different types of or, method, or ways of buying a vehicle and looking at some of the things that you have to consider or should consider um, before you do that.